SharePoint Designer 2010 is a web and application design program from Microsoft SharePoint 2010. Use it to create custom no-code solutions on the SharePoint platform. When you first open a site in SharePoint Designer, you see three main areas of the interface. The navigation pane here on the left side, the summary and gallery pages here in the middle, and the ribbon commands here at the top. The navigation pane provides quick access to all the major parts of a SharePoint site, such as its lists, pages, and workflows. When you click a category, you see all of the objects of that type on your site, such as lists and libraries. Open one of these, like the task list, and you see a summary of all the objects related to it, such as its views, forms, workflows, actions, content types, and so on. You also notice the ribbon commands change depending on what you have selected in Designer. Click the File tab to open the Backstage view, where you see additional site and application options, as well as getting online assistance for SharePoint Designer. So what can you do in SharePoint Designer 2010? Create and manage data sources internal and external to SharePoint. Create views and forms to help users work with the data on your site. Create custom workflows to manage business processes in your organization and customize the look and feel of your site to reflect your corporate brand. So we start with data sources, and the most common is the SharePoint list or library. In SharePoint Designer, it's easy to create lists and libraries. You can create one based on a template, like the task list, calendar, or announcements, or choose a library based on the document library or slide library. Here I'll create a custom list to manage my business equipment. I'll give it a name and description and OK. Once created, you can add, remove, and customize each column in the list using the List Schema Editor. Here, I'll create a new column to the list to indicate the order status of equipment. I'll give it a description, individual choices, and the default value. Then I'll specify a name to use for this column, in this case, status. The next type of data source is the data source connection which lets you connect to a web service, server-side script, database, XML file, and so on. Here I'll create a REST service connection to a weather feed I'll add to my site, specify the method, data command, and in this case, the MSN weather feed URL, and click OK. I can now add this feed to any page of my site like I would any other data source. Next, we have external data integration using SharePoint's business connectivity services. To integrate with external data, you first create an external content type. You give it a name, a description, and an office item type. In this case, I'm going to integrate with an existing customer database of mine. Then search for the external data source, of which you could choose a custom.NET solution, web service, or SQL Server. I'll choose SQL Server here, I'll specify the server name, the database name, and authentication method. In the Data Source Explorer, you choose the table containing your data and the type of operations like read, create, and update. I'll choose all operations here. Then in the Operations Wizard, map the key data source elements to their respective office properties like first name, last name, phone number, and so forth. Close the operations when finished. With the external content type created, you can now create external lists here in SharePoint Designer as well as in the browser, and that list will behave like any other list in SharePoint. Next, we get into Views and Forms, which help users see and work with the data on your site. You can create views for any data source. In the case of SharePoint lists and libraries, they already come with default views like the All Items view and My Items view. You can customize these or create new ones. Here I'll create a new view for the task list. I'll give it a name and make it the default for the list. To add a view directly to a site page, just place your cursor on the page where you want the view to appear. Use the ribbon to add a data view. Select the data source, in this case, the task list. This particular view is called an XSLT list view web part, which can be customized in SharePoint Designer as well as the browser. You can filter, sort, apply conditional formatting, add and remove columns, and much more. Forms are similar to views in that you can customize those that come with a list or library or create new ones. Here I'll create a new form for the task list. I'll give it a name, choose the new item form as the type, make it the default, and use the default content type. 
To add a form to an existing site page, place your cursor where you want the form, choose the type of form from the ribbon, and select the data source. Then customize the form in the same way you customize views. In addition to using SharePoint Designer's forms, you can create and customize your forms in InfoPath 2010. Using InfoPath's powerful and easy-to-use form design tools, you can create professional-looking forms by applying different themes and different layouts. You can also create conditional formatting, actions, and validation by creating special rules for your form. You can design both list forms and workflow forms this way using InfoPath 2010. Workflows are a powerful way to manage any business process. In SharePoint Designer, you can create custom workflows for lists and libraries, sites, or content types. Here I'll create a custom workflow associated with my equipment requests. I'll give it a name and a description. Then, in the full screen workflow designer, I can specify any condition or action. So I'll start with typing a condition based on the amount field. In this case, if the dollar amount is less than $500, then I want to perform a couple different actions. First, I want to change the workflow status, and I want it to read ordered. Then I want to add the order to another SharePoint list. In this case, my orders list, and I'll use the specified title field. Then I want to send a confirmation email to the person who requested the equipment in the first place. Now for requests at or above $500, I'll add an else if branch, and in it, add an approval process to get approval from a manager. When you open the approval process action, you're taken to the task designer, which you can use to customize every stage of an approval workflow, a powerful way to manage any business process. Now another way to design a workflow is to use Visio 2010. Here I'll create the same equipment workflow I created earlier, this time dragging and dropping shapes for each condition in each action. I add a start point, I'll compare data sources for my amount field, I'll set the workflow status, I'll create the orders list, and so on. For orders at or above $500, I'll add the approval process here. When finished adding the conditions and actions, I connect the shapes together to represent the logic of the workflow, making sure to include yes and no branches. Then I label each shape to describe the intended workflow action. Then validate the workflow and export it to SharePoint Designer for its implementation. Lastly, we have branding or changing your site's look and feel. When master page editing is enabled on the server, you see it here. Open the v4.masterpage to change the overall layout of your site. It opens in SharePoint Designer's WYSIWYG editor, which you use to edit the common elements of your site. Here I'll move the search box in the upper right corner to the upper left, simply by dragging it across the page. You can work with other items on the page using the WYSIWYG editor or code view. You can add and edit text, graphics, tables, server controls, and so on. Since you're editing the master page, the changes will appear on every page of your site. For colors, graphics, and fonts, you can make those changes with styles and cascading style sheets. Here I'll change the font used in my Quick Start Navigation menu. I'll open the Manage Styles pane and select the body of the menu, then change the font family and the font size. When I click OK, I see the changes to my Quick Start Navigation menu. For complete branding of a SharePoint site, you'll likely create and attach your own cascading style sheet, which is supported in SharePoint 2010. For publishing sites running on SharePoint Server, you can customize the layout of those pages using page layouts. Here I'll create a custom page layout that will manage my article left pages. The page layout opens in a WYSIWYG editor just like master pages. From here I can add and remove and rearrange page and content fields using the toolbox, and this layout will appear on all associated publishing pages. These are just some of the tasks you can perform in SharePoint Designer 2010 to create custom no-code solutions on the SharePoint platform. Learn more about SharePoint Designer 2010 on these websites.